for lesson four, we're actually going to start with our process plan sheet and what we're looking at uh, in, in this product, and it'll make a little bit more sense about what we're going to do. So when you look at a process plan sheet of how you're actually going to go through and machine components once it gets through the design and engineering component, um, you know, we have a size of material that we're going to have, we have a requirement, and then we have the stations or operations that it's going to run through. And you'll see that, you know, we have the pull the raw material, cut it to length for 17 pieces, and then we machine side one and we machine side two. And in different instances and in different companies, you know, we could have uh, different machines that things are being ran on. But what we're really doing is looking at the process plan sheet that's required so we know how to go through that process. So we're going to start with lesson four of the machining of side one is already complete. And we're going to talk about how we would set up and machine side two. So with that said, we're going to jump over to Delmia. And in Delmia, we already have side one completed. If I go to my activities process, uh, you'll be able to see that we have we have things already machined. We have processes laid out. Uh, those things are already taken care of. What we're going to talk about now is what happens when we need to flip this over and machine the backside. And for reference in this, this layout for lesson four, what we have is we just have a simple fixture plate that could be, you know, on a Fidal or Haas or, or any type of machine. And the reason we do that is because we're actually going to work on um, the the process of what happens when I go from machine one to machine two or stay in the same machine. Do I have to create new PPRs? How does that workflow look in Delmia? So I've set this one back to the active. And when I go back to active, you'll see that we have the face mill and then we have our pocketing and roughing. And then we have some drilling all set up for side one with a G54 and a work offset that's assigned here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through that process of the second op. Now, as I mentioned, it could be on different machines. For this example, we're just going to keep it on a on the same fit all 4020. Um, but the process is going to be the same, whether it's a brand new machine or uh, I'm using the same machine for a different setup. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to start by importing a new machine because every operation is going to be tied to a specific machine because that way we match the process plan sheet. Uh, in traditional uh, CAM systems, we may do a lot of that in our head, uh, but here because we can leverage the virtual twin over time and actually show the kinematics of every state, um, we actually are going to import a new machine. So I'll just go to mount and import resources. And down here at the bottom, I have different options. Uh, one of the ones we're going to do is we're going to add a new machine. Now, as I mentioned, if I was going to like say a Haas or a Mori or something like that, what I would could do is come up here and search, find a new machine and automatically add it. For this lesson, we're just going to use that same Fidal for OP2. So I'm just going to click Fidal from the tree. And what it's going to do is it's going to take that, copy it, and now I have a new new machine. You'll also notice that there's a little check mark by it letting me know that this is now the active one. And when it goes to this active machine, you'll see that it automatically hid the original part we wanted to machine. So for each time I create a new operation in in machine, I'm actually going to add the accessories and the components that I want to machine to that specific cell. If you think of SolidWorks, you could think of it like a configuration uh, in a sense. Uh, we do a little bit more, but in a sense, it's like a configuration. So I have my new machine set up for OP2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick what I want to machine. So again, I'm going to grab the assembly because I'm just flipping the part over in this instance. But if I wanted to run a different part or a different subcomponent or different fixtures or accessories, I can import them all into this new current machine and leverage those. But for this example, I'm going to pick my part. I'm going to pick where I want to place it on the on the workpiece. And then in this instance, I know I want to flip it 180 to be upside down. that I'll click out on this double click on the screen and we now have it flipped over now if I were to let's say accidentally flip this the wrong way or make something that's a little bit different I can always go back and edit the component so if I go to mountain import resources I can come down here 
and you'll notice that it automatically takes me back into this. So if I went to unmount, I could actually start over if I wanted to flip that. And we'll type in 180. Or 90. And when I place it, then it'll automatically flip it. So anytime you're in mount and unmount resources, if I click on the components, I have the ability to flip them however I want, however I need to do it for my workpiece. You can also drag them up. If I wanted to start all over, it's a matter of pick and place and set it uh, for whatever works best for you. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. We'll drag this guy up. Flip it to 180. And some of this I'm doing just so you can see um, how you can reset this stuff and make it work for your for whatever's best for you. So once those are set, you'll notice mount import resources go away. But just keep in mind, I can always turn that on at any time. Click those, make a change. When I'm done, I can just toggle that off. And now I have my part set how I want it to be. Now, the other thing that'll come into play is once I have the machine set and I have the manufacturing product set, we'll come back here. And now we'll go through the process like we've always done, which is we define the stock. And then I'll use my action pad, pick the part that I want to machine. And then in here, I can say for this specific machining setup, I want to use G55. We'll make this a 55. And I'll place this in an area that makes sense. And if I want to make further changes, let's say we want that X to actually go the opposite direction. We now have our G55, we have our XY set. And one other thing that we can do here too, and this is one thing that is actually really nice about using this, this process, is if I use intermediate stock, um, I can actually pull in what was done in the previous operation. So I see the results of what was done in the other operation. So that way it applies to this version as well. So there's different, there's di a lot of different settings you get by taking advantage of this. Um, but the reality is, is when I go to set this up, I can, I put in a machine that I want to use. I put in the, the part that I want to machine. I orient it in the fixtures or tooling or on the machine how I want. And now I have two versions that I can work between. So if I were to go to this one and set my original as current, you'll see that it goes back to this setup. And here's all my operations for the first setup. If I go to my configuration view, and I set this one as current, it'll now flip to this direction. Now, there are some options that you can turn on uh, that allow this automatic update to happen. Um, they are found in the, in the preferences area. So if I go to the preferences and I go to my simulation, machining, I believe it's general, if I remember correct. There's update activity status automatically and show only the current machine. If these two are checked, then it will behave like what you see uh, in mine here, where when I toggle before, everything automatically updates. If you don't have those turned on, then what you'll see is you'll see a translucent version of what's left from this one to this one. So you can change those settings depending upon which way you want to see it. But once we have the, the part operation set, we have everything done then it's really just a matter of programming the part like you normally would. So if I come in here and I do a pocket, we'll pick on that face. It's going to ask for a tool. I can pick any of the tools that I have here. So from one configuration to the next or one setup to the next, I can reuse all the same tools because they're in. I'm using the same machine. Uh, so we'll pick the bottom. Select OK. Um, We'll pick the top that we want to machine for our guide. We'll just go ahead and pick these edges. And I could pick faces here too. Um, for me, it's just habit of picking edges. Select OK. 
Now, if I am in this guide area, so if I'm in here, one thing you can do um, is you have the ability to change hardness on these if you want. So I can make them all open, I can make them all closed. While I'm in here as well, if I get this arrow, once the arrow go, the, the pointer goes like that, if I double click, I can now make those open by just clicking on them. And that now sets that these two are solid edges we machine up to. These are ones that we machine past. And then the rest is, you know, the normal things that we do, right? We want a helical offset part, uh, you know, morphing spiral. Let's say we do concentric. I don't know why, but we'll do that. And then we'll compute the toolpath. Now, based on the tool I'm using and the concentric settings, I probably should have looked at what those stepovers were. I may have had those a little small, so it may take a second here to compute. But again, that's, you know, that's user error sometimes. But you can see now here on our concentric, um, we're doing, this one is more of like an adaptive looking toolpath. But there we have this specific operation. So again, if I were to go back to the first machine, set that as current, you'll see the part in the stock flip over. Here's all the operations for this one. If I go back to my resource configuration and we set this one as current, you'll see the part in the machine flip over. And now I have the operations specifically set for this. So as I go through those process plan sheets and I look at setup one, setup two, setup three, setup four, I can have one PPR context. And then I really just set up the resource configurations I need and I'm truly creating a process plan digitally of the programs that match my process plan sheet. I have one PPR that captures everything that I need to do for machining. So whether it's milling, turning, EDM, laser, water jet, plasma, I could have all those different machines in here with all the different tool paths necessary to make the different part. And I can also swap in and out different parts with different stock as I needed. So if I had a blank that I started with and then over time it gets whittled down to different things. I'm keeping track of all of that stuff digitally and it's all held right here. Um, and everything gets separated and sorted out the way that I need to make a successful program. So this is a really quick lesson, but hopefully this helps explain how we would handle multiple setups uh, inside of Delmia Shopfloor Programmer.